Last year we spent six months at sea implementing an extensive environmental and geotechnical monitoring program. The program was designed to understand the impacts of collecting nodules from the seafloor using our fully integrated test mining system. The scientific information collected last year gave us insight into the immediate impact on the environment, but now we'd like to know how the environment has responded to that impact one year on. We'll be studying various zones of influence where sediment has settled out from our mining activities with a specific focus on understanding the limit of impact on the benthic communities in the region. We're looking for any signs of recovery to the ecosystem and if community structure and ecological function has adapted or changed since our test mining activities last year. We'll be deploying box core and multi-core instruments to collect sediment and nodule samples from the seabed. And these samples will be analysed for specific biological, geochemical and geological properties. We also have a remotely operated vehicle equipped with specialised cameras to observe sessile megafauna. Now these animals attach themselves to nodules and other hard substrates, so our intention is to revisit known locations of sponges and corals that were imaged and photographed last year and to assess their condition after being exposed to the different levels of sedimentation. The ROV will also assist in the deployment and placement of our aquatic eddy covariance landers. Now these landers will be strategically placed across our study site to measure oxygen fluxes on the seafloor and to contribute to our understanding of oxygen exchange rates of the benthic animals in the ecosystem. Whilst these activities are underway, a bioacoustic drifting array will be measuring acoustic signals in the water column from 1,000 to 2,000 metres water depth. So this instrument will drift around the study area throughout the campaign and tell us about the daily vertical migration cycles of biomass at these specific depths. We also have moorings uh, with a string of different instruments to measure currents, temperature, salinity, sedimentation rates, noise and various other physical parameters in the water column. These will collect an additional year's worth of oceanographic data in the Nori D license area and that will complement the baseline data sets that have been collected here in the past few years. Another piece of equipment that we have at our disposal is an autonomous underwater vehicle, also known as an AUV. Uh, so the AUV will map and image the seafloor to detail the extent of our sedimentation footprint and assess the megafaunal communities in the different zones of influence. And we'll also use it to produce a high resolution base map of the site where we expect small scale commercial production to occur in the future. We have a responsibility to educate ourselves and to make conscious decisions about where we extract Earth's metals from and how we do it. The impact monitoring work we are doing out here will build on the comprehensive scientific data set gathered during last year's test mining program and it will ensure a greater understanding of ecosystem responses to our mining activities. This is one of the first times that a potential new extractive industry is emerging in a responsible way with the environment being put first and governing the regulatory decision-making process.